Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video we are going to have a quick review of the chapter nuclei. Okay. Now this can be used as a division for the chapter also. Okay. Now this chapter, these are the some of the important points. Okay. That is one AMU or one atomic mass unit can also be written as one U and that is equal to mass of one carbon atom C12 atom divided by 12. So that is 1.660539 into 10 power minus 27 kg and this mass is equal to 931.5 mega electron volt of energy. Okay. Then you have the discovery of neutron by James Chadwick. Okay. Then you have the concept of this nuclear size, the nuclear radius proportional to mass number by the relation R equal to R naught A raised to the power 1 by 3. A is the mass number. Okay. Then nuclear density, you have to prove that nuclear density is constant for all nuclei and its value is 2.29 into 10 power 17 kg per meter cube. Okay. Then you have the concept of mass defect. Now mass defect, it is uh, ZMP that is the mass of protons plus A minus Z. This is the number of neutrons multiplied by mass of neutron. So this is the this is mass of protons plus mass of neutrons minus mass of the nucleus. So that will give you the mass delta mass defect delta M. Okay. Now binding energy is mass defect times C square. Okay. So that is binding energy is the energy equivalent of mass defect. Okay. But from binding energy we can't say whether this nuclei is stable or not. Stability is given by binding energy per nucleon. EBN means binding energy per nucleon. Binding energy divided by total number of nucleons. So that is delta M C square mass defect into C square divided by A. A is the mass number. Okay. Stability is proportional to binding energy per nucleon. Greater the binding energy per nucleon, greater will be the stability. So based on this, you have the curve, binding energy curve. So this is binding energy per nucleon versus mass number. So this is the shape of the curve. Now as you can see, see for these elements on this side, they have less A. That is they have less number of nucleons. Okay. So they will be lighter elements. Okay. Now similarly, elements on this side, they will have large number of nucleus, nucleons. So they will be quite heavy. Okay. So this lighter elements, they will combine so that the stability increases. See, as you go in this direction, the binding energy per nucleon increases. So the elements tends to be more stable. Okay. These are very light elements. Okay. And these are intermediate elements. So this lighter elements combine in such a way that their mass number A increases and the binding energy per nucleon also increases and they will be more stable. So, so this is the concept of fusion reaction. Okay. Now similarly heavier elements they will undergo splitting into smaller masses they will decrease their mass number so that see from this point if you come backward. Okay. So this element will have greater number of nucleons. And this element will have less number of nucleons because it is in this side. So by decreasing the number of nucleons, again the binding energy per nucleon increases and the element tends to be more stable. So this is fission reaction. So in both the reaction you will have uh, increase in binding energy per nucleon and there will be release of energy. So that concept can be inferred from this graph. Okay. Then you have the term nuclear force, the features of the nuclear force, it's uh, being short distance, it being independent of charge those things okay then you have radioactive decay law also called rutherford soddy law that is rate of decay is proportional to number of undecayed elements from that you can infer n equal to n naught e power minus lambda t this lambda is the decay constant it is also called probability of decay then you have the expression for half life and mean life the proof of this expression the proof of this expression can also be asked okay then we proceed to the next topic, the types of decay, the types of decay, alpha decay where there is a release of alpha nucleus He24, okay. So this, when, when there is an alpha decay, the, this uh, uh, product tends to have an atomic number less than 2, decreases by 2 and the mass number decreases by 4, okay. So this is the expression for the Q value of the reaction that is the energy release in this reaction alpha decay then you have the beta decay beta decay it is of two types beta minus decay and beta plus decay so in beta plus minus decay neutron is converted into a proton with the release of electron and anti neutrino okay so in this case there is an increase in the number of protons okay neutron is converted to proton so number of protons increases but the mass number remains same in beta plus decay 
uh, you have the conversion of proton to neutron with the re release of positron and neutrino okay so in this case there is a decrease in the number of protons proton is converted into neutron but the, however the mass number remains same okay then you have another process of decay that is called the ga gamma decay where there is a emission of photon okay now this gamma decay uh, is it is followed it follows the gamma decay follows alpha decay or beta decay that is uh, when an element undergoes alpha decay or beta decay the product which is formed it is usually in excited state now this product from excited state comes down to ground state by emission of photons so this is gamma decay then you have electron capture or k capture that is when a nucleus captures electron from the k shell to acquire greater stability this electron combines with the proton to uh, to form a neutron so proton will be converted into a neutron in this process so there will be a decrease in the number of protons so this is why z minus 1 a and there will be a release of neutrino okay then you have nuclear reactor okay then you need to understand all the terms associated with the nuclear reactors that is the importance of thermal neutrons okay then what is the function of controlling rods moderators coolant how these fast moving neutrons are slowed down okay uh, by help of moderators and how this what is the function of this controlling rod that is the function to absorb extra neutrons okay in uh, this in fusion reaction there is a release of extra neutron so to control that we have this controlling rods okay then you have the energy gener generation in then you have the energy generation in stars that is the thermon thermonuclear reaction the proton proton cycle in examination the, they have asked to write the proton proton cycle the equation involved in the proton proton cycle okay then last we have the controlled thermonuclear reaction okay so this is the important features of or important points of this chapter nuclei okay so hope this video is beneficial to you my best wishes good luck